is uh, Mary Louise Wolseley, Chairman of the uh, Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. Good evening. Good evening. Perhaps Ms. Representative Bean would consider introducing legislation to test the air in Concord for hallucinogens <laughs> that trigger the taxing reflex. <laughs> It might be something in the air up there. It's in the water. Um, I think actually we have a couple of painless solutions to what we were discussing at the uh, budget meeting the other night. Uh, the first one, uh, first consideration is that obviously the manager has the authority to sign the manifest to authorize the finance office to pay the bills. So I don't think that is in any way a, um, a point at issue. Uh, I will say that I uh, went to the finance office, and I admit that I don't hire attorneys all the time. And the finance office was very gracious and helped me out with the cover sheet, with whatever you fill out to ask to get a payment through. And uh, they were very kind and said they would give it to the manager. I believe. Uh, Attorney Gerald and Attorney Gould have gotten together and at least resolved the uh, retainer um, billing. What I wanted to share with you uh, related to this, the minutes of October 30th, 2012 of the Budget Committee. Uh, Eileen Latimer was the chairman and I was the vice chairman. Uh, on page four, of those minutes. Uh, we were talking with Jamie Steffen, who was then the town planner. And he was asked, uh, I asked why nothing was budgeted for the planning board by way of <coughs> legal expenses. And Jamie Steffen said they were looking for cuts, so they cut the legal line and the staff development line in that particular budget for 2013. Uh, Chairman Latimer compared the planning board budget to the budget committee budget, and she said that the budget committee does not have access to legal counsel in certain cases, and that's why money has been included for that in its budget. Then you go over to page five, and Attorney Gerald was present at that meeting, and, and this is verbatim. Uh, Mark said, if the budget committee needs legal counsel and there is any conflict, that he would call in outside counsel and charge it to the legal budget. Eileen Latimer said if the budget committee does have access, then the line can be removed from the budget committee budget as it was for the planning board. I said that, she, that I would strongly suggest that the budget committee planning and zoning keep a line for legal in their budgets as they would need budget, Board of Selectmen approval to have a, the attorney, Attorney Gerald, call in outside counsel. Um, Twelve voted in favor of getting rid of the budget line in the 2013 budget, and I was the only one opposed. I think the point at issue here, and we were told that we had to get permission from you as a board <coughs> in order to uh, hire counsel and to expend money out of the budget committee's budget. Attorney Gerald addressed the matter of using the outside counsel section of the, of the legal account to help provide counsel in the case where he has a conflict or he can't represent the board adequately uh, without calling in another counsel. What it does not address, and I think what we need to clarify here, is the planning board, zoning board, budget committee, who have legal lines with money appropriated in them for the budget committee, say, to expend. That's different from Attorney Gerald having a conflict so that he can continue representing the Board of Selectmen but not represent another party in town that deserves representation but they haven't got the money in their budget. Is there any way we can clarify that by state law, by uh, 
advice in Concord. Is there any way we can figure out if a, say, the Budget Committee, which is our focus, if the Budget Committee actually has a legal line in its budget with funding included, are they then at liberty to spend that money on something that they deem appropriate with a legal vote without going to the selectmen? I think the uh, state law is it's clear that the hiring of counsel is the function of the governing body, regardless of what, under what line it's budgeted for. Okay. That's Keep true for the library. It's true for selectmen. <clears throat> so the library can't spend. The library doesn't have to go to the board of selectmen. Right. They, their governing body because are the they're, trustees. Right. So in this, do you have an RSA reference? Because I, I just like to chat. It's the, uh, it's the case law notes under the Selectman's Authority to Govern Prudential Affairs. And you can uh, check Attorney Laughlin's treatise on municipal law and taxation. Okay, great. That would be helpful. I just happened to have that question after reading that in the minutes, and it just didn't seem to address the authority of, say, the Budget Committee. Um, if I then may make a request uh, to the Board uh, to allow us, since we are under contract with uh, Attorney Gould, and there was a misunderstanding there, um, Fred didn't put his hand up fast enough to holler at us <laughs> when we made the vote on the 20th. So uh, we have apparently inadvertently caused a problem here. If we may ask you this evening to vote to authorize us to spend the money in the 2016 budget for legal services uh, so that we can satisfy our um, obligation to Attorney Gould, and we did vote publicly on the 20th of December to um, to authorize the chair to hire counsel. Questions? Uh, I defer. Uh, yeah, Dana, okay. I have a question. One, I don't remember voting on December 20th budget committee meeting, giving the permit the chairperson of the budget committee permission to hire a legal counsel. The motion that was made, I don't know, Mark, if you could help me out, was the, not uh, the, the minutes, specifically the, said. The minutes have not come out. It's been transcribed from the tape. It says, uh, Mr. Pierce, make a motion, if you would please, along this line, would ask the Budget Committee to instruct the Chairman to retain an appropriate lawyer to assist the Budget Committee in legal matters concerning its legal duties and obligations and have the lawyer attend a meeting of the Budget Committee to answer questions and gain approval of the hiring of the lawyer. That's the verbatim. And this stemmed from the Board of Selectmen's request of the Budget Committee for 91A in regards right. to... Right. Yeah. Right. So the Budget Committee is asking the Board of Selectmen for permission to hire a third lawyer to state the answer that has already been given them by town council and also by the attorney at New Hampshire Municipal Association. And my second question, Mark, would be, since the only authority comes from the governing body to hire counsel, would the contract with Attorney Gould be considered binding? No. Thank you. Is there a motion on the floor? No. We, we I'd like to make a motion. And I'd like to speak well, to it. Well, we, we're in the question period right now. But uh, can you can make, make a motion, motion, but he can make a motion. I mean, okay. And I'd like to speak to it afterwards. I'd like to, to make a motion that we rescind the 91A request. You asked for a second. I'll second it so that we can for discussion. Thank you. Number one, the, the, some members have already complied with the request. We have the emails. The emails have been looked at by Attorney Gerald, and they've been looked at by the NMHA. They have been deemed to be illegal meetings. That's out there for the public to see. There was one email that was responded to by a member of the Budget Committee to the so absolutely illegal. 
it was said at the meeting the other night that he was a new member therefore let it slide that's not the case when I was a teenager I was told that ignorance of the law doesn't help you got to know what's going on so if you're on a committee you have to know what's going on the budget committee is almost finished I think that them spending two thousand dollars on a attorney is a waste of money I think it's a waste of the town attorney's time I think it's a waste of the energy of the of the town manager to go through with this and I think it's out there the public can look at it the public can go back can look at the meetings that are absolutely chaotic can see what goes on with that committee and I think I think we're there I think we're just <coughs> wasting money taxpayer money we're wasting energy and uh, time time that can be spent on infrastructure issues can be spent on police issues can be spent on fire issues can be spent on a lot more serious issues and I think uh, you know I invite people to go back and look at at the meetings at those meetings on tape look how they went after the manager on a trash issue that was a Warren article a couple of years ago was passed went after the the attorney because they didn't feel like he was his uh, his uh, budget because it wasn't going for them that he was going all for the selectmen look what he's done here tonight talking about the different issues up in the legislative he's for the town I think we're wasting our time we're wasting our energy I think people can see what goes on and that's my motion thank you uh, mr. chairman um, mark the first the first paragraph that the motion to hire an attorney from the minutes and the, the minutes have not officially been published in, not that I've when seen. is the date of the the meeting that we're talking about the request of this December or, 20 okay so that's going on three weeks how long does it take you to get minutes out and I, why are they so late we have we tend to have complicated meetings and Barbara is doing the best okay. she how, can. How, 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 how when are our minutes out are they out three weeks later no, they're usually out before the end of the week. End of the week, okay. Right. You're the budget committee, uh, Chairman Wilson. Right. Uh, it's a $26 million budget. There are legal contracts. People need to be informed. You're failing in your leadership responsibilities, okay, uh, in that matter. The public's not informed. I sat with you on this board, and I know the integrity of uh, the interest that you purport to have for people, and you're violating that trust by not providing minutes. You, in this motion to secure funding, specifically addressed the 91A. Is that correct? It was a direct response you, to counsel's uh, um, letter to Mark, us. Mark, will you read the first paragraph that Mr. Pierce's uh, motion refers to? Uh, this, uh, Mr. Pierce makes a motion, if you would please, along this line. And above that, uh, Chairman Woolsey says, budget committee members received letter last week on Friday from the town council requesting information from budget committee under rights no law and the budget committee response is as follows. And then there was a, a, a letter read to the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Uh, there, there has been a, a formal request. Jim, I believe you made the motion for the 91A. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, the Board voted how on that? Was it unanimous? I believe it was. I believe it was, too. You, your, your initial motion for 91 Alpha for the budget committee. Was it unanimous? That was my request? motion? And yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jim, it was. Okay. okay. Uh, I believe it was unanimous. Okay, the town, by by outside sources, by taxpayers, uh, is routinely uh, besieged, if you will, uh, by 91A requests, and that's the fundamental right of, of citizens mm -hmm. to gain information. Uh, your board has probably produced those. You've produced those. You've sued the board of selectmen. You've gone to court. You've gone to state agencies on your own. Okay, Jim talks about uh, when you were selectman. Uh, talks about the chaos and the mayhem. We're not getting minutes. We're requesting uh, legal fees to pay an attorney. You did not, according to the liaison to your committee, Selectman Barnes, have the vote to actually enter into that contract. Yes, in the letter that was signed by the committee, I was not allowed to see because I would not sign it. Okay. That's so what I heard when the, I the boards, The board's night. chair... The board's, the, the board's liaison is being kept in the dark. Uh, we gave I have the floor. No, you did not. I have the floor. Um, the negotiations that you entered in with Mr. Gould 
you as a budget committee member, you as a selectman, uh, you would, uh, and I know this from having served with you, if there was uh, a town department head, uh, you talk about encumbrances that wanted to backdate a legal contract and go back to the last year and request a contract and spend taxpayer money for that, you would, you would, you would, you would be Mary Louise Wilson with them, and you would not tolerate for a second. You you have provided documents to the town, or they have been provided, that you have an attorney saying he's redrafted your request to backdate from 2017 to 2016 a request for taxpayer funds. That is not allowed in this town. That is unethical. That's unprofessional, and it's not done. We don't go back and do backdated contracts. And I disagree with uh, comments tonight that this is not important. This is the fundamental integrity of the town. You are the chair, the appointed chair of the budget committee. There are union contracts. There are men and women working out there. They're looking for, for pay raises and union contracts, ratifications. There's important infrastructure. You're holding the legal meetings. You held the legal meetings when you were a selectman. I had your email blocked. Mr. Welch, is that correct? That's correct, sir. And you were, you were holding illegal meetings and continuing your discussions as a selectman. I had you blocked because I wanted no part of it. I informed the town manager. I informed the, the chair because I'm not going to play that game. I'm not going to be part of it. And that's what you're doing as a selectman. You continue to do it now. There is uh, a 91A request for the information concerned with all your communication with that law firm so we can see what happened and how the chairman of the budget committee in this town is requesting to backdate an obligation to the town, and I have the floor, to go back in 2017 and ask, ask to have a contract redated to go to the prior year's appropriation. Unacceptable, unacceptable, unethical, not done, period. There will be a 91A if it's, is there a 91A for that right now? Not yet. Not yet, but that will be coming. For your communications in totality with this law firm in Concord, that law firm in Concord charges $275 an hour? Correct. $275 an hour for you to deny the board, the governing body, any citizen, request for information as guaranteed by state law to fight that. It's an open-ended contract that he will bill you how much later on subsequently? Uh, his contract currently reads that there would be a $2,000 retainer charged against monthly needing to be replenished to the extent it's billed against. So it sounds like an open-ended contract that you're going to spend and squander taxpayer money on a backdated purchase order, if you will, uh, on behalf of the town of Hampton, and it's a can of worms. And it's a standard that will not be tolerated by this board, and I'm confident that the board will vote in the majority to continue to unearth this type of malfeasance. And again, this is the budget committee in the town of Hampton. It's a $26 million corporation. It's the most important corporation in this town. Men and women and the chiefest in the back of this room put their lives on the line. And you're playing games with this entire corporate structure. And it's, it's, it's a very, very low bar, Mary Louise, a very low bar. And the facts speak for themselves. The motion is that from this board, there was a motion, is that correct? Last, at the last meeting, that this board will never sign and authorize the town manager nor the finance director to fund legal opposition to a 91A, ever. Is that correct? That's what you voted. Was, was that vote unanimous? Yes. No, three to one. No, well, three to one. Yes. Three to three one. one. It's three to one that nobody that is requesting information from the town will ever be allowed to take taxpayer money and deny a citizen the request for information that they're seeking, including you, Mary Louise. So that's on the plate. So that's, that's not going to happen for you or anybody else in this town. And we're going to look into your conversations with that law firm up in Concord and backdating a contract to try and have the town and taxpayers fund your expedition to fight what is a, a constitutional right in this country. So that's where we're at, because I don't know what the legal issues are, but those are the very specifics of this issue. Those are the very, and I'm not done, I still have the floor. So that's the low standard that you have brought to this. There is a Warren article out to do away with the budget committee. Last year it was to reduce the number of people on the board. Did that motion pass, Did that Warren article pass? Mm -hmm. Now, in large part, due to your leadership, there's a Warren article to abolish the budget committee because of your behavior and your conduct and your low bar of ethics. You're a very low bar of ethics and you come here and have the audacity tonight and, and, and mask it under something else other than what it really is. So I don't support your discussion here tonight. I don't support a motion that obfuscates and, and, and blinds the public to the transparency 
and the constitutional right they have for information. And this board voted on it, and uh, this this board, as far as I'm concerned, is going to continue uh, with that request for a 91A and get the information that it voted in the majority for. And there will be a subsequent motion uh, coming for us and a subsequent subsequent. Uh, 91A. For your information with this law firm in Concord, we're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to get to the details of you trying to renegotiate a contract in 2017 to go back to 2016. We're going to get to the bottom of that. And there was a motion that was passed that this board will never authorize the finance director or the town manager to fund with taxpayer money a constitutional right for free information in the United States of America in the town of Hampton in the state of New Hampshire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just like to follow up that I agree pretty much with what you're saying, but the only thing is we already know what's out there. We know what 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 took place. We have that information. I don't think I, I just think what what's the out what's the gain? What are we gonna gain more from what we gained already? It's known that it was illegal meetings, it was illegal uh correspondence, there was response to it. So now we go and we keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, and what's the final gain? We, we, we aren't pushing anything, I would say. Uh, We're asking for 91A. Well, we, I still it, was, it was your motion. It was supported. I still have the floor. It was, it was your... I still have the floor. Oh, oh, pardon me. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, I think at this point, though, what, what are we going to gain from it? I, I want to know what the outcome is. You know, what, We're putting a lot of effort into it. Okay. What is I'll, the gain? I'll answer that question. So this is the town of Hampton, and these are constitutional rights of people, and this is a duly elected board, and this is the governing body. We're going to set the high bar. And we're going to etch this in stone so none of this malfeasance ever occurs again. And people can't have private meetings in the United States of America, in the town of Hampton, on a $26 million budget. And this is just the emails, Jim. This doesn't speak to the telephone conversations. That would be a whole other can of worms. Okay? They're holding private meetings. This isn't a third world country. This isn't uh, somebody without a constitution. That's the purpose of it. And I'm not expending any energy on this. Because I know what's going on, because I've served with Mary Louise Woolsey before. And I've been subject to the same kind of shenanigans. The exact same kind of shenanigans. And we're going to set the bar, and we're going to put the spotlight on it. And it's not going to be a mushroom growing in the dark. And nobody is going to have a private meeting for the budget committee, the selectmen's meeting, uh, the cemetery commission, or any commission in this town. And when we, when we vote on something, uh, we vote on it. And we're going through with it. And I hear Mr. Welch didn't respond quick enough. I hear in 2012, Mr. Gerald said this and said that. No, the issue is this young lady's conduct. It's her lack of ethics, and it's her chaotic, as you describe it, lack of leadership with that budget committee. And it's why it was reduced last year, and it's why it may well get thrown off the ranch this year with the Warren article. And these aren't, these aren't lunatics that are signing this petition to remove it. These are business owners and taxpayers. So my, my answer to you is, we take the high bar, you made the motion, we support it, we itch this in stone, and nobody violates the rights of citizens in this town and taxpayers, and nobody hides with a shadow government, and we set the bar high on it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I call a vote on my motion? Okay, we have a motion, we'll second it, to drop the 91A request. send the 91A, yeah. Okay, all those in favor? Those opposed? So, may I yep. respond? Sure. Thank you. Mr. Welch was present at our meeting on December 20th, and heard the motion, and it would have helped, perhaps. Uh, you put your hand up pretty quickly on the fifth thread, and, and I acknowledged you right away. You could have at least said, all of you need to understand that you need to come to the Board of Selectmen in order to do this. That it would have helped. I don't go out and hire attorneys every day. I thought I was doing what I was directed to do by my board. Number two, and that was a public vote. Number two, I, that was holiday time, as you all know. We had Christmas and New Year's. I was trying very hard to find counsel before the end of the year, with all of the holiday mess, and it's certainly not easy, in order to have the 2016 budget funds available for the budget committee. I signed 
the letter of engagement, which was emailed to me on December 29th, 2016. The retainer document was not included. That wasn't my fault. I don't work for the law firm. When it came the first of the following week, it came with the first of the following week's date on it, which was January 3rd, 2017. I called and said, we need, you know, I signed the engagement letter in 2016, and so we need to have the dates coordinated. I believe uh, Mark has already spoken with Attorney Gould about that. I wasn't asking anybody to change anything. I had signed and scanned and mailed the engagement document in 2016. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a magician. I tried my best to do what I was instructed to do by the Budget Committee in a public vote. I don't I don't quite understand the 91A um, uproar. I took over the chair of the Budget Committee in September. <coughs> it took a little while to get organized. Uh, when Mr. Nick Bridle left, he did leave a couple of notes of things that were left hanging, and I read that. And he did say that he has secured the calendar for the Budget Committee for the coming work sessions. I went to Christina, who knows everything, and I checked with her. Sure enough, the dates for the Budget Committee hearings and work sessions were noted properly on the calendar. I wrote them all down so I could produce a, a sheet telling people what dates we would be meeting, and that worked well, by the time we got into the end of October, it was obvious that the 2017 budget figures were not going to be available to us in a timely manner. The meeting schedule for the Budget Committee is posted and has been posted on the meeting schedule since late summer. Whenever Nick went over it, I agreed with what he did. It was, it was all set. That was there for anybody to see. In my lifetime, the calendar hasn't changed. You have January, February, March, etc. And I think every board of selectmen and every manager understands when it is appropriate to produce the next year's requested budget figures for the Budget Committee to review. I did not get the notice from Christy that the Budget Committee books were ready until November 4th. We missed the 27th, the first. Point of order, Mr. Third. Chairman. Mm -hmm. There was documentation um, put out by the Finance Director on when budgets were produced. So we heard that it wasn't timely, but uh, Mr. Welch, could you share the information on that? G Actually, generically, generally. within a general sense, to answer your question, uh, we were roughly within one week of where we've been the last four years. Okay. I just like, we're, we're hearing that things okay, aren't One week of completing the budget. We're, yeah. we're hearing things aren't timely. Ms. Woolsey, you are a strong advocate of your own career in town politics and how long you've served with the Budget Committee. And you, then the, suddenly you're, you're, you have no expertise in 91As, you have no expertise with lawyers, but you sued the Board of Selectmen. Uh, and you, this is again a point of order because I want to rebut this before I forget it all. I'm not taking notes. Suddenly you're a novice and you, you, you like to espouse when you run uh, in, in all of your elections just how many years you've been on the Budget Committee, how many times you've been a selectman, and suddenly you're incompetent. That's what you're telling us tonight. And suddenly, it's Mr. Welch's fault. Suddenly, it's Mr. Gerald's fault. Suddenly, you don't know what you're doing. And that's obvious. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. May I continue? Yes. I went back 10 years, as I publicly stated, and found that the Budget Committee meeting, initial meeting, to review the budget request was between the 26th 
and the 30th of October. The last 10 years, I didn't try going back 40 years, but I thought 10 years was indicative. The first meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee to review the next year's budget request took place in the last week of October, period. The schedule was clearly online on meeting that you can see that, uh, that you can see. Before the budget committee sits down to review your budget request, they need at least a couple of days to review the documents. I have, I have a point of order. I, okay. I'm trying. Are we, are we discussing timely fashion of getting the budget, or are we discussing legal issues? Legal, legal issues. issues. I, we're it, off it, the subject right now. It has yes. nothing to do with what you know, the emails that went back and forth. That's that's not what we're discussing. The budget committee needs at least a couple of days to review what this year turned out to be a $27 million budget request. So there's a time factor there. I okay, lost again, point of order, the agenda says legal issues. How is that a legal issue? We have a liaison. And, and the, and no, the no, no, budget no. was a 0.9% increase from last year. It was $26.8 million roughly this year. $26.8 million is $27 million. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, may I please, since I have listened to, I, well, too bad. Legal issue, I had to. Can we, can we try to stick to the legal issue part? I understand please? that, but this is, re, this is related. <laughs> I had to revise the budget committee work schedule probably six to eight times. And every time I did that, I sent an attachment. I sent an attachment to the members of the budget committee. I have 12 members of the committee who need to know when meetings are scheduled and what they're for. What do you want me to do? You're babbling about 91A. Mr. Chairman. Should I? No. No, I want to. Should I? Should I? Seriously? Should I call 12 members of the budget committee and read the schedule to them? Point of order, Should Mr. I Chairman. I'm okay. not. But, Mr. Chairman, Mary Louise, we don't have an issue with those emails. Those are not the emails we are referring to. Well, then somebody could. There are other ones, and somebody, you are well aware of what they are. Well, I'm not aware of what and they any are. Any email, as you should be aware, when, when you... Um, send them out for a notification of a meeting. Mm -hmm. You've got every right to do that. It's when there start to be some extra ad-libbing in there. That's the problem. You Chairman. open up the opportunity to allow people <coughs> to interject or you interject yourself. That's what's not allowed in, in that. Sending out the agenda, sending out any of that that's fine. It's when you start to add more stuff to it, that's when there becomes a problem, and that's what the 91A issue is basically about. Well, I would like to see what I know that I did get a little excited when people were pouncing on me that one weekend in December, all hollering about pay raises. And I did send, I acknowledge that, and I forwarded that to you. I acknowledge that, that uh, I, I wasn't advocating anything and the collective bargaining hadn't come up, that was probably not a smart thing to do. But otherwise, I think I have sent emails to Regina saying, where is the, the IT report? I asked by email if you could post the collective bargaining agreements online, and they finally are online, and we appreciate that, because if we can read those things, that Mr. Chairman, helps. point of order, again. But this, these are not legal I issues. would like to Mr. know Chairman, what... Chairman, may I have the floor, please, as a point of order? No. Point of order. Point of order. This is right. a point of order. The agenda item is legal issues. We're getting a reiteration of the inconsequential minutia in self-defense of Madam Woolsey. Mary Louise, Mr. Buckley from the New Hampshire Municipal Association, that we pay $17,000 a year emphatically states, and he's an attorney at law, that you and your committee have violated state law under 91A. Mr. Gerald states that 
you have violated 91A. I have read this. I have read your correspondence as a selectman and had your email access blocked when you were selectman. You did the same thing. We are talking here tonight, Mr. Chairman, about legal issues. We can go on and listen to this, but I, what is the other issue besides 91A? It says issues. Is there another legal issue? No, that's it. The hiring of count house. Uh, hiring of outside counsel. counsel. But that's related to 91A. Okay, and is that an issue tonight? Hiring of outside counsel for the budget committee? Is that an, the other well, issue? Well, I would say it is okay. because, because I did what I was directed to do by okay. the budget committee, and I and we've ended up in a tangle here. I got it. And at the time the vote was taken, I think it would have been helpful talking talking about communications if Mr. Welch had said just the brief comment you need to run this by Point the board. Point of order selection. again, Mr. Chairman. We've we've heard Mr. Welch like been thrown under the bus. This is the third time. But this is not Mr. Welch's responsibility for a tenured statesperson in the town is you, Mary Louise. There has been a vote that the Board of Selectmen will never authorize the expenditure of taxpayer funds to oppose a 91A request. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. That's the second legal issue. That's off the table. You're not going to get it. So is there another legal issue? We've addressed both of those. Well, how did you expect us no, to... No, is there another legal issue, Mr. Chairman? How did I you expect know. us to respond as a committee to the 91A request that seemed rather overarching to us, and we needed to know specifically what was supposed <coughs> to be done. And we are not attorneys, none of us. And that seemed a very broad-based request. And I, I can understand the motion that was made, I didn't make it, to hire counsel. Now we have an attorney inadvertently caught in the middle of a controversy here because this is not attorney Gould's fault and on a personal level and a budget committee level I would like to see a listing of the horrible emails that you are concerned with because I would like to understand well, point of order Mr. Chairman nobody's Hold saying on. horrible first of all we've only got a few of them right from, a, well, from the, a couple of people. Steve LeBranch said he forwarded a hundred some. Uh, I don't know. I don't believe it was a hundred. Well, However, a but, couple? Then what? I do not understand what we're talking about. Because there are more than three members on the budget committee. Yes. And only three of them have responded. But people are puzzled as to the response, which is why we wanted counsel, because it seems so, such a broad-based request. First of all, I have Yahoo. And I don't know. I'm stupid with technology. I don't know how to go back six months or whatever it is to retrieve all the confounded stuff like everybody else probably might. If you can give me examples, if you can give me a list, you don't have to do it now, but give me a list of identifying emails that are breaking the law. If I had put and in, sometimes in the old days I'd put information only do not respond. Is that appropriate to do? How do you handle how do you handle a committee with 13 members, 12 of whom have to be updated and understand particularly the schedules, but also if budget committee made a request of Regina and we didn't hear back in a timely manner, I would have sent a request. What is a timely manner? Because we got you what you wanted when it was the first became possible to get. If but it hasn't come to the Board of Selectmen yet, it's not going to go to the Budget Committee. I Neither is the budget. It wasn't done. That's why you didn't get it till November 14th. I Mr. Chairman, we can go on with this all night. There's a specific uh, 91A request that has not been complied with by uh, uh, the chair nor the board, uh, the budget committee. Uh, we have addressed two uh, legal issues. Uh, we can talk about this all night. Now we're hearing that uh, Madam Louise Wilsey has no computer uh, expertise. Where if you bring your laptop in to see Paul, he'll get exactly what you need from your computer. Well, so if, if if we can bring this to a wrap up because uh, we've identified two issues and I hear no others. If you can identify for me where I have done something terrible with these emails that you've already got, I will appreciate that. A list, whatever, so we can see where the problem is. Number two. Ms. Selectman Wilson, point of order, provided emails to you. 
some have been sent last week. The, the question here is compliance with the request. It's not the significance of the document. I understand. But it's a broad request, Council. The, and I, furthermore... I have sent you the request as directed by the <laughs> select... Yes, I the, understand the, the that. The legal issue is not what is the significance of the communications. The, the legal question is, should the request be complied with? As Mr. Bean pointed out the other day, that should and uh, that is not a a uh, adversarial request. Yeah. It is it is a right to know law request that can be complied with. If there's an argument over the legal significance of what appears in the emails, then we can talk about that. But as yet, we've only gotten a few members' responses. If the board still wants these documents, then they should then this should be complied with. But I would like it to add something need to what counsel. I, and it's not Mary Louise. It's not just you. It's the whole committee needs to comply with this. Right. You are not. It's you're not the only part of the problem. All right. Everyone needs to comply with the request that was approved by this board from the budget committee. That's well, the, it. There's, there's nothing to argue about it. Hiring outside legal outside attorneys is ludicrous. But the request seemed overly broad and I think people had a hard time including me trying to understand what the focus is if I send Regina I, I try very hard for people to understand what I'm doing as the chairman I don't want to be sneaking around as the chairman if I'm changing dates if I'm asking for information I want every member of that committee to know precisely what's going on I think that is the fair way as the chairman to conduct business. I think I, I have a little problem with what I feel is, is overly defining our 91A, but someone smarter than I am can figure that out. We, I went ahead at direction of my committee and hired counsel. We need to at least, out of respect for that poor lawyer, to resolve in some fashion what we do I it would probably take Point of me, order, Mr. I don't Mr. know how Chairman. long it would take to go back in and go Point of order. we need we need to resolve for the point of the poor taxpayer that the board has voted that this will not be paid for so I'm much more concerned about the poor taxpayer and a young lady or an elderly or citizen of this town that struggles to pay their taxes and we've heard Mr. Silber to come in here and talk about how people are, are, are pressured because there's no social security increase. And Madam Wolsey would go out and spend in an open-ended contract thousands and thousands of dollars without a formal vote by the budget committee. And we can talk about this all night long, but it's very clear. It's a very specific 91A request. Our position is that bill will never be paid. And uh, again, I would ask that we terminate this discussion and uh, we move on with the town's business. It's we need to resolve. You know, the uh, the attorney <coughs> should not be made to suffer for whatever. Hasn't done any work yet. I don't Mr. care Bridal. about the, what the attorney we, does. Well, and doesn't we know. have gone ahead in good faith and and hired an individual. I th think Mark wouldn't like it if someone did that to him. <coughs> but we need to figure out. Um, where we go from here, I don't know. I can't take a gun and force everybody on the budget committee to uh, send in their emails. I guess you can hire firms to check people's email and come up with whatever it is you're looking for. Um, I have a problem at the, I, you know, I don't know whether you can come in and find the emails that you're looking for because I have a devil of a time trying to go back I went back and sent about six to mark I think I copied you guys on them and it would take me forever to go back tracking through all the mess that I have of email and that's why like today I or the other day when you sent it in my home email I asked you to please send it to my town right. email that way there it all comes through here and that's the benefit of having a town email right uh, but I think the request was pretty specific. I think we asked for for any uh, correspondence that went back and forth. Um, <coughs> so um, my only correspondence, Rusty, as chairman of the budget committee, has been with Mark, with Fred, 
with Christy, with Christina, with Regina, asking for information or whatever. I'm not. And and but we ask that of every member. And of the you budget have committee. copies of some of those. We, we've asked every member of the budget committee, and we have not got those back. But you do you not have copies that I have sent to Regina? You know you have that. I copy the whole board you, of selectmen. Yes, you you st you just stated that. You're just one member of that board. Well, I can't. We've take, asked. I can't take a gun, Rusty. Then what can I do? May, may, can I just make a st just yeah. a statement? And I think it would have helped. But one second, Jim, bless your heart. I think it would have helped <laughs> us tremendously, truly, Fred, because <laughs> you have so much experience. If you had said to us, "Stop, halt." Don't get yourself into trouble. Point of order, Mr. The Chairman. We're en enough of trying really to throw the town manager under the bus. I think it's going to be a much bigger mess than we need to get into. Mm -hmm. We've got to have a resolution here. We, we've had it. This meeting's okay. over. I know you've said that. I'm just, I want to go on the record saying this is going to be a much bigger mess than we need to get into, and we should be able to resolve this, and <coughs> it should be able to. Everybody knows that it was the illegal meeting, that it was. For whatever reason, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna question somebody's motives. All right, but it was done. We all know that. We're gonna keep going and going and going. I mean, my motion was shot down. That's fine. But I just want to go on record saying we're getting into way too much of a mess than we need to get into. And, and I totally agree with you. The, the, all we need to have is is have everybody send us their emails, and we can move forward. And I like to say it wasn't a mess for me. It wasn't a mess for Bob Ladd. It wasn't a mess for Steve LeBranch. Steve LeBranch. And Mary Louise has sent in some of hers. So I don't understand why it should be a mess. It's not just a mess. Forward your emails right. to. If I may, Mr. Chairman, just wrapping up, uh, and, and Jim, there, there needs to be no further effort. Uh, either members of the budget committee comply with New Hampshire law or they don't. And there needs to be no more uh, effort on that. There's a Warren article that's coming up to abolish the budget committee. And if we have a lawless budget committee that's providing input, holding meetings illegally, then perhaps voters will make the right decision. But we don't need to hear how Mr. Welch didn't do his job. We've been down that road years ago, Mary Louise. We don't hear, need to hear how Mark Gerald isn't doing his job. We don't need to hear about your ignorance and your incompetence. You're always boasting about your municipal excellence in your capabilities. I'm talking about computers, Mr. I have, the, I have the floor. Um, and so it doesn't need to go any further. Either the budget committee complies with law or they don't. And there's a, there's a, a, a referendum on their very existence after being cut down last year. And there is no more effort on it. They either comply or they don't. Mr. Mr. Chairman, may I please request that we, we terminate this insanity now? May I have one? I'm going to let Jim go ahead. Rebuttal. Thank you. Uh, the mess I'm talking about is I don't want to get into a mess. It's not with people giving their emails or not. I don't want to get into a legal mess of not somebody not being paid and the town owing money. I want to resolve. That's all, you know. So, and I agree they either comply or they don't. But let's not get into any kind of a mess here that we're going to be end up in court or something and wasting more money. You know, Might I, I see? You know, I don't yeah. know oh, how oh, you yeah. can <clears throat> force individuals to they are elected officials and I, by I by being an elected or appointed official they they yep. fall under certain requirements and not, as you know well know as yep. in 91a yep. they are supposed to by that yes sir May i suggest mr chairman that if any of these members wish to receive assistance from the town on how to discover these emails and, okay. and format them and, and put, print them out and, and then they give them to the individuals and they can send them in, 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 in compliance with the requirements that our IT staff be requested to assist in that, that manner. So moved. So you mean bring in the computer? We could bring in our IT people to help. Okay, there so are people, people would like... have to bring, members would have to bring in their... Either that or they can come to you. Well, that's what I'm Either Same. one. They can either come to you or we can bring them in here. Well, it's not going to do any good to come to me. I can't find anything. Well, dismantling your computer is not necessary. They can come. You can open the computer up, and they can show you how to find it. Okay. 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 So, <clears throat> which would make it much easier. I appreciate that. Now, what do I do with the Budget Committee regarding council? 
again, if, if you if you need counsel, obviously. But we've we, already my the, my problem, Rusty, is pursuant to the budget committee's motion. I have engaged counsel. What do we do from here? The budget committee's motion was not to engage counsel herself, but to bring that counsel to a meeting where the budget committee would explore hiring. And I, I think if you go back and look at it, that's exactly what it says in the motion. Madam Mosley, you terminated a chair with the motion here in this town because you requested billing information for terminating the services of outside counsel that was very expensive for labor negotiations. You, you made that motion sitting right at this desk. You made that motion. It was seconded. Ben Moore quit. Oh, I know that. Mike, Mike came in and took, took the spot. Mm -hmm. You were all subsequently voted off the island. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. That's unheard of in this town. Unheard of. Okay? No, and the charges were spurious. They were, they were, again, concocted. And I would probably say an illegal meeting occurred before you launched that missive. Now you are hiring outside counsel without the authority and begging here in this moment because you're worried about a conquered lawyer. You're not worried about the taxpayer. You have engaged counsel on your own, not with any official documents. And it's a two-sided two -sided argument that you have. I've grown sick of it. I have watched you for years in this town. You are a tornado of destruction. You continue tonight. And I would just ask that this stop Either the budget committee complies with the law or they don't. It's that simple, Mr. Bridal. And we can end this right now. Okay. So. Well, there's no. Is, there's no resolution. Well, we. You can uh, entertain a motion in response to the request that's being made to the board tonight <clears throat> to hire this council. Which we already had a vote not to, but. Right. We did. <coughs> Anybody that wants to entertain that motion? Well, I voted in the negative. I voted in the negative vet, so Correct. I cannot, can I? We don't right. use Robert's rules of order. We don't so use anybody, Robert's so. Yeah. All right. I will make the motion to get past this and just get it through that the budget committee is allowed to use their line item for legal counsel, but not to backdate it to 2016, the 2017, and with a cap on it of $2,000. I'll make that motion. Any second? I don't see a second, so motion fails. So end the discussion. End right. the discussion. Correct. Well, what? What do we do? Where do we go from here? We were trying to resolve the 91A request by getting counsel for the budget committee in a timely manner, so this wouldn't drag on. I would suggest this, Mr. Chairman. Again. Um, this is just typical Mary Louise. This is this is your forte. Chaos and destruction. I would say this, that uh, Mr. Gerald has offered his legal expertise. He is a town employee and impartial. Mr. Buckley, we pay the New Hampshire Municipal Association $17,000 a year. He has ascribed illegal nature to your committee and your correspondence. You can ask him again, and you can go through your liaison. And then you can call Mr. Buckley, and he can tell you how to do this. Is that correct, Mr. Bridal? That is the solution to your problem. I have no intention. And either of you calling. obey the law or you don't. And everybody on your committee, Steve LeBranch has obeyed the law. Other members have obeyed the law. And if others choose to be lawless, so be it. I have no intention of calling Attorney Buckley, who a was extremely insulting right, when I called him, him, and b now that chairman of committees, including the Budget Committee, everyone under the five-person uh, listing now cannot directly call the NHA. Unless you come to <laughs> ask us, and I'm sure I would give you that permission to do so. I well, believe it's I, just been suggested. And it has been just, uh, just suggested there that you call him. He has just suggested that you I call know Mr. That. Buckley. And when I called Mr. Buckley, he it was the most insulting phone call I have ever taken in Point my life. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Now our registered representative for the, the town has voted on that Mary Louise has authorized expenditures for during her last tenure is now being thrown under the bus. And I won't go for this character assassination. I've been subject to it from this woman. I'm not going to allow it to continue. We, we've got to come to some type of resolution, which is why I came here this evening. Because I'm listening to what you're saying, and I'm I'm sorry that we couldn't catch this before we ended up 
in and, this particular position. And I think the resolution is yes. that we've asked for a 91A request. Yes. We have not received it from some of the members. Yes. If that doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. They're breaking the law as a 91A request. Okay, well, could I at least ask for a, a brief listing or some type of information on what was found to be illegal from the emails you've received to this point in time? I know you're, you're, you had a concern over the email that I sent saying everybody's yelling about their taxes. We, what, what other where are the other problems? Some, at some point. If I could, I, yes, uh, we. I, I would see. I will ask. Attorney I would General, make a motion that Mr. Okay. Buckley's response, that was uh, maybe no. in a confidential status right now, in his letter to the town attorney, perhaps to, to Madam Louise Wilsey, uh, be posted to the town website. I second it. So, and I will. Okay, we have a motion. Oh. There. <laughs> motion and seconded. All those in favor. Okay, I Unanimous. haven't seen the letter, okay. so does so, is it specific? We, uh, we will get you a copy of it. Okay. We, I will also ask Attorney uh, Gerald to go through what he does have and take a look at it and give you some basis as to what I need to the items we're looking for. Correct. Right. Now, what do we do about outside counsel? It's got to be resolved. We can't just sit here sucking our thumbs. We've, we've already said at this point in time we're not doing anything about the outside council. We said that in a vote the other day. That when it comes to a 91A issue, we are not going to uh, support any board. Any board. Whether it be our board or, or any board. Or any employee. Or any employee, yeah. There you go. Well, we thank you, and I'm sure the members of the Budget Committee had an opportunity to watch this evening, and we will confer and see what happens. Thank you. Thank you.